So good evening, dear friends, dear society members, CSE society members, the followers and the attendees of our conferences. It is a great pleasure to say you hello today from our first virtual ESE studio. And this is, of course, not our first project, but we continue now on a virtual platforms. And we are very grateful for the technological advancements that allows us to connect the world uh, virtually. So today uh, we are going to host Professor Gianluca Gambarini and we will going to have a talk about uh, the Krakow meeting, the autumn meeting that is going to be held in Poland, in Krakow, this autumn, September from 6 to 7. So he will give us the uh, overview and the sneak peek into the program and also maybe some valuable insights. So we are going to say hello to Gianluca, but first of all, I would like to, to have an opportunity and to thank uh, the newly formed Communication and Engagement Committee. I'm a chair of that committee, but uh, I am nothing without my team. So I am very, very grateful for four people who has, have joined the committee and also one doctor, she moved to the clinical practice committee, but she is a great contributor. And if we will need her help, so she will pop up and help us with our communication projects. So I would like to say thank you to Dr. Massimo Gevorussio, uh, Ruth um, um, Perez Al Alfayette, um, uh, Sebastian Ortolani, and also Shalini Kanasigan. So um, there is also a very nice opportunity to present you our new person in the family. And I'm adding uh, Monica Freire. She is not the new person in ESC and she knows us very, very well because you, Monica, probably are working for more than four years or even more. So you know uh, the association very well and we are so, happy to have you on board as a chief operative officer <laughs> is it That's correct right. yes it is so correct, you, are, Laura. you are taking a very important role and actually uh, you are a top expert of the organizing uh, conferences and also very well organized person and we are so happy to have you such a such a highly the right person in this field on our ESC board. <laughs> so, and probably I would, I can connect already Professor Gianluca Gambarini. Hello, Gianluca. How Hi, are you? I'm fine. Hi from Rome to every participant to this, uh, I mean, uh, discussion and introduction to our meeting. And hi to Monica also. Hello yeah, so, everyone, I'm delighted to be here. I I, I think that uh, Gianluca, probably you don't need any introduction, but just in case someone doesn't know you, I would like to say that you are a great clinician. You are a professor, well-known known speaker and educator. Also, you are involved in some probably inventions, uh, some technological advancements of our uh, instruments and technologies and also you are long time serving personal um, person uh, at the ESC so at the moment your position is uh, a vice president or president elect but you were serving also as a um, chair of the clinical practice committee for quite a long time yes you are correct <laughs> this means that i'm getting a little bit old but okay <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. Maybe this is a high time for you to to elevate your career. Yeah, yes, yeah. but in Italy you say it's, it's like a very good red wine. If it takes some time, <laughs> so you get better. <laughs> of course, we agree. So Gianluca, it's uh, great to hear uh, to have you here, and um, it's um, it's not our first talk actually. Probably this is the first online, but uh, you was uh, our guest in uh, at the Helsinki Live Studio, and we have had a few talks with you. And uh, thank you very much for always saying yes and always um, coming into 
for, for a talk and clarify to clarify the issues for our society members. So we probably can start the interview and um, the interview, the, the main focus of our interview is of course uh, the um, Krakow meeting. And uh, I have experience from some person around me that uh, people start to be a little bit confused because we uh, used to host two uh, annual meetings, uh, biannual conferences, sorry, uh, in a row. So that was Budapest. And after that, uh, next year, it was Helsinki. But those meetings supposed to be like biannual meetings. Yes. So they are supposed to be held every second year. So now we are talking about annual meeting and auto meeting, which is very different perhaps from the biannual conferences. So can you make a little bit like a distinction between these two events and what was previously, what does it mean previously um, um, autumn meeting and what is the difference of the autumn meeting that we are going to host uh, this year? Yes, uh, well, the confusion was created by the COVID because uh, we had to organize uh, two biennial meetings in a row. Actually, the biennial meeting is, uh, I mean, the key meeting uh, derived from the ESC and it's every two years, as the name says. And uh, the autumn meeting actually is another meeting that uh, we used to have uh, every year uh, that we were not holding the Congress, the Biennial Congress. And it was a very special meeting because it was at the very beginning, it was a research meeting by invitation, a sort of closed meeting. And it was um, only for ESC specialists, certified members, academics, and PhD students. And obviously, being like this, it was hosted in a university and uh, traditionally it was in ACTA Amsterdam. And uh, in the year that the uh, biennial meeting was not scheduled, so this was the initial uh, initial difference. Uh, and uh, but now things are are changing quite a lot. Yeah. So the Krakow meeting this year is going to be a unique because it will be open for everyone, and everyone is invited. So it means that. Um, specialists, uh, general practitioners, scientists, students, postgraduate students can enter and not wait for any invitation. So actually we can announce that the registration is really open and you can uh, follow the link that I have just posted on the screen and make a re registration to secure your places. So Gianluca, tell us a little bit about the new format of the meeting. Well, uh, uh, the we want to have a meeting which is different from the biennial meeting, uh, actually. And the initial idea of the auto meeting, we want to keep because it was a very successful idea. The idea was to have experts and lecturers discussing on one specific topic all together. And uh, traditionally in our uh, mm, auto meeting, it was a, mainly a research meeting but then we understood that when you speak about a topic, it's interesting from different perspective, both uh, from uh, theoretical aspect, uh, research and uh, uh, academic and theoretical way, but also from a clinical practice. And so what happened four years ago, we started to change the auto meeting, not only into a research meeting, in an academic meeting, but also in a clinical uh, meeting. And uh, it was divided in two days. The first day was the uh, same topic about research. And the next day was the same topic about uh, clinical uh, practice. And uh, we used to have meetings on very interesting topics like assess cavity and working length or vital pulp therapy or post-endodontic restoration. And uh, this is... I mean, uh, quite interesting because uh, all the meetings were uh, were held in one single hall. So all the people were mixing together and uh, exchanging, uh, I mean, uh, um, opinions and discussion. And uh, the attendant really liked the idea of having one topic discussed deeply and, uh, and also providing different clinical approaches. As a result, 
the feedback from participants was very, very good because, uh, I mean, uh, they came and uh, had a very, a lot of things to take home, starting from uh, theoretical knowledge, but also a lot of clinical hints and uh, practical tips and tricks they could use in their own practice the day after. So that's why we, uh, I personally like a lot this, uh, this idea of uh, discussing uh, one topic. And uh, since we had the su such a big success, we, think we, we, we thought that uh, we should not limit this only to our specialists and our uh, certified members, but also open to all dentists. So all of them could benefit from such a selective deep approach and uh, and get this advantage of uh, of attending of course <laughs> we are very happy that now this meeting is open so the uh, crack of meeting uh, i will also try to share the the slide because the program is already published and actually it's available on the website uh, of the crack of meeting so um, the program is already designed and uh, perhaps you was the the main person who was in charge of uh, creating this program can you give us a little bit a sneak peek into that oh well <laughs> yes the the basic idea behind this meeting was or the inspiration <laughs> of this meeting was the new uh, S3 scientific guidelines that were developed by ESC in the last year. It was a huge effort because um, we wanted to produce a clinical practice guideline with a very robust new process based on a structured consensus, including a lot of literature systematic review, panels of clinical expert discussions, and also talks with representative stakeholders, including patients. So that's a very interesting idea that uh, I, I wanted to, in a certain way, to share uh, what is behind uh, such big process with, uh, I mean, uh, the dentist. And uh, this is, was very interesting. And uh, we could make it in a, in a very different way, but we wanted to make it a very easy way to understand. And uh, so we decided that uh, the main concept is to follow the guidelines and discuss some topics that we address in the guidelines. And uh, we thought about the four main topics that uh, are fundamental steps in the endodontic procedure. One is instrumentation, the other is uh, irrigation, and the last one is, uh, I mean, obturation. And obviously also add a new topic, which is regenerative endodontics or regendo. And uh, since we have a very, very good number uh, at ESC of great lecturers and great researcher and academic and great clinician, we were able to have a, a panel of uh, four experts for each of uh, this uh, topic. And they will share, I mean, uh, the same topic from different view. Two of them from uh, a, a clinical aspect and the other one from uh, a research and theoretical aspect. But once again, what is very interesting based on the guidelines, based on what we did in the guidelines and the research and the, and the discussion that we had in the guidelines. Yeah, and it's, uh, it, we can say that this is like a kind of synergy between the science and the clinical practice and uh, trying to find a consensus in between of each other, yes, together. <laughs> this is, uh, well, this is a very, very interesting topic uh, to discuss because we know that medicine and dentistry is not an exact science. But uh, with the guidelines, uh, we, we were able to give some recommendation. We were able to give some suggestion of what to do and uh, what not to do. And uh, the idea of a consensus, the idea of having a, a topic uh, to, which is also controversial. I'm just making an example. I don't want to spoil <laughs> the, the Congress, but for example, we, uh, we had a strong recommendation about single visit treatment versus multiple visit, which is a very oh, interesting yeah. uh, uh, topic because uh, many people in, in Europe still do multiple visits. But uh, now we have the, I mean, uh, uh, the evidence uh, based on uh, 
I mean, systematic uh, review with meta analysis, uh, and uh, we have uh, a lot of the clinical uh, outcomes that uh, are supporting this uh, this choice. And uh, we will do this for uh, all the four topics, uh, and I think that will create uh, a lot of interest among uh, the participants, and they will bring home a very very. Uh, good knowledge and also clinical tips and tricks because I think this is also very important. Yeah, and I think it's also worth to note that uh, the the intention is to, to bring all the participants in one hall. So in fact, we will have uh, only one hall all those two two days, and all the discussions from the scientific point of view and clinical point of view will be only in this hall. So we also expect. Mm -hmm. Uh, also uh, ex ex expect an active uh, participation from the audience because, as you said, the guidelines are already created, but this is not continuous guidelines. They are not continued. They are not finished, yes, because they will be updated, updated, and updated. Now, this is just, let's say, only the beginning of the guidelines. There are many uh, blank spaces and there are still a lot of gaps, especially in this, from the science point of, point of view. Yes, you are correct, uh, because this is a very, uh, a very interesting topic to discuss. And, uh, and I think it will be discussed in the research lectures, because uh, in order to make the guidelines, uh, we have to search all the current literature and uh, we find out uh, First of all, some, uh, I mean, robust evidence in some cases, and some cases we did not. So actually, when we were not able to find uh, uh, such a strong and robust evidence uh, about a topic, we can now suggest uh, clinicians and academics uh, to make some specific research in order to fill the gaps. So this is, uh, I mean, uh, it's very interesting and totally new topic they mean that uh, to improve the support literature-based evidence, we can define it in this way, and uh, therefore transfer this kind of evidence into a grade of recommendation which is uh, stronger. Because uh, also, <laughs> I don't want to spoil too much, but also in our guidelines, the grade of recommendation sometimes it's not so strong. It's, uh, it's weak and open and gives the dentist a wide opportunity of treatment. So this we want to analyze uh, from a purely scientific evidence-based way and suggest for the academician and researchers new way or, or new research to be performed in order to give more evidence. On the, clinical, on the clinical part, which is also very important, we also have to understand uh, all the possible all the possible treatment options uh, and uh, that uh, are currently recommended by the guidelines so this is also a very interesting topic yeah and so so the audience uh, the, that uh, the conference that the meeting is targeting is very very broad yes so it means that this is academia should be interested in the meeting also clinicians general practitioners specialists educators inventors am i right well this is the uh, uh the goal of our society is uh, to make uh, endodontics progressing and uh, bringing to a very high level both in terms of uh, science and in terms of clinical practice and uh in my humble opinion, I think uh, this is, uh, I mean, what people want to. Uh, they want the, I mean, the clinical guidelines, they want an help, they want a direction. But then also, uh, we have to think that uh, dentistry is also an art. So it's, uh, it's something that uh, we give some recommendation, we give some advice, but then the dentist have to do by their own. There, there's no robotic endodontics coming, okay. and it will not come in the next uh, maybe 20, 30 years at least. So uh, the the dentist should get all this information, all this uh, I mean uh, clinical uh, advices, and then they should uh, go and treat a patient in a proper way, following this uh, recommendation. And this is the nicest part because uh, endo is so unpredictable, the anatomy is so unpredictable, so there's always room for improvement. 
Of course, and always the room for discussions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for friendly discussions, yes, to finding finding the best way we can practice and to, to serve our patients. This is the that, most important. Yes, but you were right when you were addressing the fact that we are in only one hole all together. So that should, uh, and it happened in the past, uh, that should increase uh, the discussion, uh, the controversial issues to be addressed, yeah. uh, and it's in a more friendly way, yeah. Yes, and this is uh, this should be uh, a small event, actually. We say smaller, so we expect that approximately 600 of people. Uh, so this is not as small, but... I hope that uh, the brilliant minds and the brilliant cl clinicians, so skillful, skillful clinicians, will come to discuss, and that will be very interesting and intensive discussion. So that would be perfect uh, outcome of that of that event. Well, we hope that uh, the auto meeting, if we structure in this way and make it very very interesting on very specific topic, will attract uh, many many people because. Uh, it's uh, easier to spend more time on one topic uh, rather than going to uh, a big Congress when we have a lot of topics discussed in different halls. It's sometimes it's not so easy to, fo to follow everything that uh, we would like to, to see. Obviously, we have uh, sometimes recorded lecture and whatsoever, but uh, I mean, the feeling, the feedback or being uh, all together in one big goal is, uh, is unique. Yeah, and, and the program actually covers all those steps that we are doing every every single day for every single patient. So this is this is very important. And and uh, the last question probably, unless Monica has something to do, to say, and maybe we have some questions from the audience. So uh, of course the the conference the the meeting will be held in Krakow, very beautiful, very rich in cultural and historical heritage city. I have been there. Uh, we have uh, Lithuania and Poland have some some connections, historical connections. So this is very beautiful city. And personally, me, I'm really planning to spend several days um, after the conference or before the conference just to go around the city and see uh, all 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 interesting sites. What about you, Gianluca? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> before answering to this question, I would like first to thank all the people who are spending their time in organizing this meeting, the people from the ESC, the people from AIM, and above all, all our sponsor that uh, allow us to be able to organize this uh, big event. Uh, Poland I like a lot. And very honestly, I was uh, cooperating um, at the very beginning of my career with Watch University. Watch is very nice pronouncing. I hope I did well. <laughs> and uh, But also I was a speaker in uh, Dental Spaghetti in Krakow and Pulp Fiction uh, in Warsaw. And uh, I've always been impressed by the knowledge and the passion of uh, the Polish dentist. And, oh, this is uh, a huge society. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. A big society. Yeah. Big society, active. Uh, people are very interested. So it will be really a big pleasure to go back to Poland and lecture. And Krakow, obviously, as you mentioned, is a very beautiful city with a long history and a lot of interesting places also in the surroundings. So, uh, I mean, apart... Uh, we obviously, participants must go to the Congress, but after the Congress, uh, my suggestion is that they should spend a, a few more days in Krakow and the surroundings because it will be really a great experience. And obviously, I, the weather should be also nice because it's early September. So yeah, cool. it's a good occasion to visit Central Europe. Okay, so uh, so far what we have from the questions from uh, only comments. So the people say hello uh, to us from Toronto, as far as I know, to Osaka. So it's so nice, and I see some really really good friends of the ESC. So so nice that you are watching us. Thank you very much, and uh, the next interview with Hal Benton will be on the 20th of March and we will talk uh, more about ESPRI guidelines process. So some of people are here, probably they can join our interview with Hal and uh, maybe have some comments or some, some valuable insights. So thank you very much for 
connecting with us. Thanks for watching us. Thank you very much, Gianluca, for spending your time here in our studio. Maybe, Monica, you have something to add? I just want to say that I'm uh, delighted to be here and very excited to be part of ESE uh, and to be involved uh, with the meeting in Krakow. Uh, it's going to be the first time that ESE goes to Poland. So we, um, it, these are very exciting times and I'm really looking forward to seeing you there. So thank you very much for watching and uh, hopefully we can see each other in September. And uh, on the 20th of March for the next interview. Thanks very much. Have a great have evening. A cozy, yeah, have a great evening. Someone has a nice morning. So goodbye, good night, uh, and uh, see you very soon. See you soon, Krakow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ciao, ciao. Take care. Yeah, take care.